Hi. Hello. <laughs> Happy Pride. How are you? Happy, Happy Pride. 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 Well done, Pride. you. Well done, you. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> well, we just started five minutes late, so I will edit on um, the final part. Uh, <laughs> sorry for that. Um, how are you doing, Christos and Dokan? Doku Khan, you go first. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Trying to get used to the new normals and the new standards. But I'm loving this. I'm loving this joint uh, pride. It is going really well. I'm so excited about it. What, about what, what I can say is that I'm amazed. Well done, you. Uh, both of the organizations and all the people who are working for this. Uh, looking at this uh, footage from uh, the Pride uh, really woke up some memories, to be honest. <laughs> um, and, and what I can say is that, you know, it's great that you pulled this over and, um, and in this way we are uniting everybody, uh, all the cultures on the island, not only Greek, Tur uh, Greek and Turkish Cypriots, but also Maronites, Armenians, Latins, all the nationals uh, under this what we call gay culture. So well done for the for the unification, the at least the, the digital one. <laughs> yeah, it feels amazing and to I, be part of it. Yeah, and I want to thank you for joining us in this session. So in this session, we will talk about LGBTI pluses and the health. So it is a broad issue, but we will try to summarize and just pinpoint some of the issues that we are facing. But before starting, I know both of you really closely, but for the ones that who might not know you, I would like you to introduce yourselves, what kind of things you are doing, what your, your organizations are doing. So a brief introduction to, to the session, please. Yes. Christos, do you want to go first? Yeah, I, um, uh, whatever, <laughs> doesn't matter. Um, okay, obviously, I'm, um, I'm here representing uh, the Aid Solidarity Movement, um, which is uh, an organization established in 1989 um, in the Republic of Cyprus. It's a non-governmental, non-for-profit organization. Um, I joined the organization in 2015, and I'm the um, uh, co communications re representative um, and we we also um, first of all let me say a few a few things like um, we basically work around supporting people living with HIV, uh, their families, their friends, their partners. Um, we are advocating for human rights and especially when it comes to uh, human rights related to the people who live with HIV. And uh, we we are promoting sexual health and prevention and general awareness until we reach to zero um, uh, diagnosis. Uh, we, um, uh, we have been working very closely with both organizations, both ACCEPT, uh, LBGTI Cyprus and uh, uh, Queer Cyprus Association. Uh, we do strive uh, to have um, uh, an inclusive um, approach to um, uh, to the all cultures on the island and internationally. Um, that's why we, we try to uh, translate everything into all languages, Greek, Turkish, English, and um, uh, you know, for, for NGOs, for those who are watching us uh, who don't have enough money to do this, this is all done basically on a volunteer base. And um, what, I can, what, what I can say on a personal level is that, um, it's almost 10 years since the first um, international um, day against homophobia when I participated uh, in the island when I came back from uh, my studies and uh, living abroad. And it's 10 years already. And look at us where we are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the one? Yeah, um, I am here representing Queer Cyprus Association. I've been an activist there for the last I don't know, many years, like not as many, but like five or six, I think. And I am currently also employed at the association as well. And let me talk about a little bit brief introduction to the association. I think most people already know, but uh, Queer Cyprus is an LGBTI rights organization that mainly does queer activism on many different 
um, you know, sectors, including education, law, and health. And that's our aim to try to be as inclusive and as intersectional in our activism as we can be. And LGBTI health has been really important for us because we see that it is being neglected most of the time, especially in a conflicted region that we live in, that is Cyprus, we can see that these neglects and disclusion from the narrative has been really tough on the LGBTI community. Therefore, we focus our activism as well on the LGBTI health more so than the other areas as well. And we focus on, you know, gender reassignment, we focus on um, sexual health, HIV. We try to be as inclusive and as intersectional within the sectors that we're working as well. So let's just keep it at that, I think, yeah. Um, so we will talk about the stigmatization or exclusion from society, discrimination in many levels, especially in when it comes to sexual health, which sexuality is still taboo in, I mean, in our country. So, but before going to that, we hear many terms um, like PEP, PrEP, or U equals to you. Um, these kind of things are new terminology for some of us. And in order to understand the, this, what's going on all around the world, especially also in Cyprus, um, what kind of combination prevention methods are there? What are we um, promoting? Um, how we can protect ourselves and all this kind of stuff. I would like to have a brief introduction to this. Uh, maybe Ristos, you start? Yes. Um... Okay, for, first of all, when, when we're talking about combination prevention, uh, what do we mean with that word? We mean that there are tools for prevention to be used um, when it comes to preventing HIV transmission and, of course, for other sexually transmitted infections, but um, I will focus on HIV for now. Um, and let me start first by saying that... Um, you know, it's important for the people who are watching us right now to know that being HIV positive and uh, uh, having a, an AIDS syndrome is two different things. It's not the same thing. So um, uh, it is important to know because um, I will I will talk in a in a minute about U equals U, which will probably lead us into the stigma uh, discussion. But um, in order to prevent HIV transmission. Uh, the main, we have to look at the, the main roots of transmission, how HIV is being transmitted. And um, uh, basically in Cyprus and right now, as far as we know, in um, Central and Eastern, uh, Central and Western Europe, the main way of transmission is um, the sexual contact, the um, uh, sexual practices. Uh, not only between uh, men, um, just to break some uh, stereotypes that people may, may have, um, just by mentioning that uh, worldwide we have, out of all the people who have um, who are living with um, with HIV, 52% are women, and 48% are men. Um, but when we're um, when we're talking about the LBGTI community. Um, it's a good idea, I think, to focus a bit on on the sexual practices we have and how we decide to make them safer. There is no sex that is a hundred percent safe, but there uh, there are a lot of ways to to make sex safer. And I have five ways to mention uh, when it comes to combination prevention and each person can use more than one wh wh whatever tool is suitable for them the first one is obviously condoms lubes gloves which means that when we when we're using a condom if we if this is one of the prevention methods that we prefer um, it's a good idea to use uh, lubricant uh, water-based lubricant or silicon-based uh, lubricant uh, the same thing goes for um, uh, practices that need gloves. So um, we always combine uh, condoms with loops and, and gloves with loops. And we always check the dates, um, the expiring dates on both. Um, the second thing is something very simple. Testing as prevention is uh, having HIV tests as often as we want, every three months, every six months, every year. Um, what we call routine testing, because 
the HIV testing is not something that you just uh, take a test and you're done with your life. It's it's it has to be um, a routine for us and um, uh, for all of us, and we are all trying to to um, destigmatize testing. I mean, even testing has stigma. <laughs> you know, um, it's okay to have um, a test every as often as you think it is important. And that's why we've established this, the Cyprus Checkpoint, which is the Center for Prevention and Information and Testing for HIV and other sexual transmitted infections. We operate in the South. We have a newly um, uh, established space in the, in, in the area of the old Lefkosha in the South. It's walking distance from the, the checkpoint, the Lokmachi Lidra checkpoint. And um, uh, we, we have had cooperations with queer Cyprus in the past where we even had HIV testing uh, in, the buffer, in the buffer zone. <laughs> but um, now people can actually uh, book their appointments and come and get tested in a safe and non-judgmental environment. Um, now, uh, there are two new, they're not so new, but they're new to us, um, methods of prevention, PEP and PREP. Um, they are acronyms, so PEP e stands for post-exposure prophylaxis and PREP stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis. So we're talking about antiretroviral treatment. This is the pills that people who live with HIV are also taking. But in this case, uh, people who are negative um, and want to stay negative can use these, these treatments as prevention which is very important because it's really uh, um, making the gap between um, uh, uh, people who have been diagnosed with HIV and people who are not living with HIV even smaller uh, because people can use the same treatment more or less. Um, the people who, who are using um, uh, the treatment because they are positive, they, they um, are treating the virus that they, uh, um, that they, they live with and they, they are managing the virus in, to such an extent that today we know um, cannot be transmitted if uh, the, um, the treatment is used uh, properly you know, and effectively. Um, but um, for people who want to use this treatment as, um, um, as a prevention, PEP, the post-exposure prophylaxis exists in Cyprus. Uh, so it's, uh, at least in the South, it's free and in, uh, in, in uh, around the countries of European Union and in other places of the world. Uh, so it's like the after the after day pill, let's call it. It, it. Actually, it's a treatment that lasts usually for one month. You have to start this treatment within the first three days of uh, an intercourse, a sexual intercourse that you may think that uh, could be um, a reason for uh, HIV exposure. Um, and it works up to a very high percentage, especially if you, uh, the earliest you start it, the better it works. It doesn't work after the first three days. Um, PrEP now, which is the, um, um, the pill before, <laughs> let's say, um, which is the P-exposure prophylaxis, is not exactly just a pill. So um, it's a strategy. It's not a pill that you're taking and you, you go and have sex. But there are different ways of using it. Um, uh, different um, regimes and different um, methods of using PrEP. The most um, uh, effective is taking a pill every day and continuing to, to be taking the pill. Uh, so after the, fi the fifth day, um, there is up to 99% of prevention for HIV transmission. Um, when it comes to um, to anal sex, um, I'm saying this because this period is slightly different when it comes to vaginal sex, and I'm talking both about cis and trans people, uh, depending on uh, their genitalia. So uh, PrEP doesn't exist in Cyprus officially, unfortunately. We are advocating for that. We we want PrEP to be in Cyprus because it's the only one method that is not here. And the good news is that it's, it is accessible online. Uh, people can go online and buy it and use it. So what we did is 
we've um, we've created um, a, a website right now. It's in Greek, and we need to translate it in Turkish <laughs> uh, and uh, to English to um, to explain people on how to use the treatment if they decide to take responsibility uh, and uh, buy the, um, the treatment online. And this brings me back to um, the, um, the, this, the, the last part, which is um, a, a great um, uh, scientific, scientifically proved um, truth. We now have the evidence, the scientific evidence to state that any person living with HIV uh, who is under effective treatment and their viral load is undetectable, um, cannot transmit the virus even uh, through sex without condoms, without protection or PrEP. So, so this changes everything. What does that mean? Um, the people who live with HIV um, are living with a virus. So they are taking daily treatment to monitor the virus and um, um, have a, a healthier life live uh, just as uh, uh, all the people who are not living with HIV when it comes to um, living with the virus. So the treatment is really helping them and supporting them in terms of managing the virus. But the treatment is doing something else also. It, it minimizes the virus to such a small level, uh, which is under 20 copies of the virus per ml of blood. So when, when we're talking about these small numbers, under 200 copies, um, we say that the person uh, who lives with HIV is undetectable and the virus is undetectable. And um, I, think, um, I think it's better, it, it's a better term to say that the virus is undetectable, not the person, you know. And, um, and when the virus is undetectable, it is also untransmittable. We, why does this change everything which we call um, in, um, um, in an easy way to remember it, undetectable equals, equals untransmittable. Um, we've created a trilingual website in Greek, English, Turkish this time. Everybody can go online on Stop HIV um, uh, a Stigma. So it's one word, stophivstigma.com choose the language that they speak and find out about you equals you and why this is uh, changing everything. And why it is changing everything? Because first of all, people who live with HIV can now stop feeling as if they are uh, moving uh, weapons that are going to spread the virus. They cannot spread the virus, even if they are having unprotected sex. We are not saying that people should have a protected sex, but in cases that they choose to, um, and there are many cases where people do have a protected sex. We know that as well from statistics. Um, and people in general, not just LBGTQI people, uh, people in general have unprotected sex. So, so if someone is living with HIV and is under effective treatment, they cannot, cannot, <laughs> I, can, I don't know how many times I have to say it and how capital letters I have to put, but uh, they cannot trans transfer the virus to someone else. Yes. Uh um, did you um, yes, I did. I did, and I think this this connects us to the stigma that we have to we have. Yeah, to before before move. going that maybe it's better to listen from Dokan. Um, what's the situation in the northern part? You actually mentioned some of the availabilities of these uh, prevention combinations. Um, there is one question uh, before going to Dokan that I hope Dokan will summarize also what's the situation going in the northern part. We have a question of how about HPV vaccines? Are they available? So I, I am asking you, the both of you, if you know about this, if, is it ever available in Cyprus? Yeah. As far as I know, yes, they are. Okay. Um, people need to do a test though, especially if they're not uh, uh, under uh, 20, I think they need to have a test to see if they are negative. Uh, and the vaccines are covering only specific um, 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 strings. strings, yeah, of the of the different virus of the virus. But um, it is available, yeah. Okay, thank you. And though, kind of, I know that there is no such a establishment in the northern part, like Aid Solidarity Movement, 
we have some NGOs like Queer Cyprus Association or um, Patients' Rights Association that are trying to deal with this kind of issues. But of course, their main target is not HIV or AIDS. Um, so that, that it's not always their priority. I think that there is a huge need of this kind of establishment, I believe, in the northern part as well, um, so that we can be more specific, more into the target. Because as far as I know, in the legal text, um, we are deporting people um, who are living with HIV. If not, they are not citizens, and there are many other issues that's going on. So I hope that though, can you will summarize us the availability of this kind of prevention combinations and also yeah. the situation. Then we go to the stigmatization part. Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, when when we're talking about the northern part of Cyprus in terms of health, it is a little bit more, more problematic because you know the conflicts affecting the region as well as the budgets and everything that goes along with it makes it more uh, difficult for, um, you know, access to new treatments around the world. Even though there is cooperation between the North and the South in terms of health, which is amazing, uh, there is still problematic areas when it comes to it, especially we observe that there are great human rights violations and universal patient rights violations happening, especially around the topics of HIV and se other sexually transmitted disease as well. So in terms of uh, prevention methods, so yeah, uh, we do not right now have access to PrEP as well, uh, even though there are sometimes they are available at the so-called state hospitals. And the, these are not guaranteed because of the whole budget as well as the stigma around the HIV, the stigmatization and the politicization of the issue, which creates a boundary that keeps the prevention on the down low as well. So we do see, like you said earlier, that there is a need for an organization that works specifically on HIV, which we are in the process of trying to establish right now as well, which is important to mention here, mention here as well. And however, we see that for people living with HIV and for those who get, want to get tested, we do have a system in place where we ensure anonymity of those who come to the hospitals to get tested but that is only applicable to the Nicosia Hospital, Nicosia State Hospital, and other hospitals are not as guaranteed when it comes to anonymity. And they use a coding system which allows for those who test positive and who are living with HIV to access their medications, which are free as well. However, uh, we do see that, like I mentioned earlier, due to budgets and the, you know the whole legislative part of it and how politics and social stigmatization around HIV, we don't have enough medication sometimes. And there are times that people living with HIV go a month or two months without having access to their treatment, which is, and you know, um, which is basically preventing their treatment, which is putting their life at risk at some level. And that's definitely a human rights violation that needs to be stopped. And like you said earlier as well, when someone tests positive for HIV, if they're not a citizen of the northern part of Cyprus, they're being immediately deported, which is one of the biggest issues that we have faced so far in the north because that reduces the amount of people who are willing to go get tested. And if they're not tested, we don't know how many people are living with HIV. We don't know if they're being treated. We don't know the level of spread that is happening. And that is something that is problematic and needs to be, you know, changed immediately. And with the H HPV vaccines as well, uh, now that I can see the comments down below as well, uh, we do have HPV, in, like the same in the South, then you need to get tested, then you can get free access to HPV vaccines as well. But overall, the situation in the North, we can see that, especially with the stigma, which we will, I think, cover in the following section with Christos as well, um, has putting a strain into the HIV activism as well as access to rights and prevention and trying to reduce the amount and getting to the level of that it should be. And what about PEP and PrEP, Dokan? Do we have, do, is it available in northern part? The PrEP? You know? Yes. Oh, um, on some occasions, we have been able to identify that we there are PrEP medication that is being provided by the 
against state hospitals. However, again, with the budget issues as well as the whole stigma, we do see that uh, there are times that goes that we, we don't have access to that. Therefore, it is really problematic. So it is really hard to say that we do or we do not in the north. And it is the whole gray area when it comes to HIV that there are a lot of things that are happening that we're not aware of that we should do. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I, I want to take this opportunity in this section to invite people living with HIV to contact us. Uh, you can contact Okan, Herman, or me, myself, or Christos, uh, or to Queer Cyprus or Accept directly. As we said, we hope to establish an organization in the northern part as well. So uh, make sure that your anonymity will be your, I mean, we will pay attention to, to confidentiality and all your ideas and your lived experiences are valuable. So please contact us. Uh, hopefully soon we will work on this to write a project and uh, you know establish a, such an organization like Aid Solidarity Movement, which will go together actually. We will cooperate, I hope. Um, from here, I know that HIV and LGBTI community have a long, long history uh, on stigmatization. Um, many of the organization avoid, LGBT organization avoid to talk about HIV because it, it was a huge stigmatization in the past. But we also know that in our past, um, HIV was a kind of a label that was used against the, the gay people. So coming to the stigmatization, and I want your opinions about this, what is going on on sexual health and multi-layered stigma in and out of the LGBTI community. Start, let's start with Christos and Dokan and then we will finalize the session. Okay, okay. first of all, let me say that, yes, uh, uh, a health organization, a health focus uh, organization when it comes to HIV in the North is really needed uh, because queer cannot do anything, unless, you know, it cannot do everything. So um, it's a great initiative. And uh, we also get, um, uh, a lot of requests and we are working with people living in the north who either want to get tested or are living with HIV and we've uh, even tried to link to care people who were um, who are wh who are or were living in the north and could not pass to the south because um, the, um, the system in the south is um, uh, uh, covering as well uh, uh, Turkey Cypriots but if you are uh, a student from a third uh, country, from a somewhere else, uh, you cannot get the treatment from the South. So, so that's a, a, a huge problem. It's a violation of human rights and it's definitely um, uh, a huge shock for the people who are living uh, in the North and finding out that they are HIV, especially if they're not uh, Cypriots. Uh, now, what is stigma? <laughs> you know, stigma is... If I don't like, I, I don't like to, to simplify things too much because it's a complex issue. But um, I, I will just say that stigma is basically the fear. And when we're talking about stigma, we're talking about a lot of different stigmas. You know, it's we're talking about the stigma that people living with HIV have for themselves, for example. Yeah, the inter internalized stigma, um, uh, the the stigma that other people have for people living with HIV. Even in, in the LBGTI community, um, you know, if, you ju if somebody just um, uh, scrolls down in uh, profiles on uh, Grindr, you will see that there are um, people who are, um, have on their profiles um, stigmatizing um, uh, taglines about, you know, um, looking only for people who are negative. But I will say the other way around as well. There are also positive people, people living with HIV, who are also, because of stigma, looking on, they are looking also uh, uh, for, to, to meet people who are um, also um, uh, living with HIV, which, which shows that um, we, we have a long way to, to work with stigma. First of all, internally, for people living with HIV to realize that and I'm saying this um, as loud as I can to anybody who is watching us. It's, uh, it's not shameful for somebody to be HIV positive. It's, it's not something that people should be ashamed of. 
just like people should not be ashamed if they have any kind of disability or which which is you know be living with hiv is not a disability disability or of course but um just like um it's not a, a shame to uh, um, uh, be living with uh, i don't know having any other kind of uh, a health uh, condition you know um so so the first thing that we have to realize is that the u equals u is changing the era to um, end fear. We should stop being afraid of HIV being transmitted, either uh, as if we are living with HIV or uh, uh, as, as a partner of someone who is living with HIV. It's, it's, you know, we have to get educated. We have to go and find out about what, what this means and get and and end with stigma <laughs> because there's really no reason yeah i agree Th uh, there is no, there's no justification anymore exactly i mean in a, in an era that we live full of technology and google and everything i mean people should like really search the ngos working in this area there are many booklets published and People should get more awareness on this issue and stop stigmatizing people or acting like that uh, people living with HIV, like it's end of their life. And they, you know, all this um, uh, discrimination that is going on around. And I think, I believe, yeah, we should all come together and fight against this, especially LGBTI community who faces this discrimination. Before finalizing our session, we are already out of time. Uh, though, can I want to have your final words and then we will have a break and then we will have the next session. All right, um, I'll try to summarize everything that I want to say about stigma, which is quite a lot, to be honest. It can go for days. <laughs> um, well, as for your first question, which was LGBTI organizations and working in their field of HIV and AIDS and the stigma that comes along with it and not choosing to work in that area because of that stigma, I think that shouldn't be a reason to work in that area because it is important for us to be able to see that the queer movement itself has been and has come to this place of success due to the HIV movement, due to AIDS movement. And it is so important for us to be able to remember that because of HIV and AIDS stigma that LGBTI rights has increased all around the world, because of that stigma, we had to stand up for ourselves and we had to say, no, we have a right to live. We have a right to be equal to anyone else in the world. And that's why it is so important for LGBTI organizations all around the world to voice their opinions on HIV and AIDS and remember that we are all in this together and you cannot separate the LGBTI movement from the HIV AIDS movement. We're talking about an intersectional activism that is required to change the world for better. And as for stigma in Cyprus, we know that currently uh, in the northern part of Cyprus, we know studies that highlight that most of the university students still think that HIV can be transmitted through using the same toilet with someone who is living with HIV. You know, that is problematic. We have to be aware of what is HIV and what is the distinction between AIDS. And we have to be aware of the treatments. We have to be aware of the ways that we can protect ourselves. And we have to be able to understand that living with HIV is not, like Christoph said, something to be shamed for. And if I may, if I may add, Dogan, uh, all yeah. the importance of the uh, of us activists, of the organizations of the community, is th the importance is huge because everything we have succeeded so far is because the activists and the the community uh, has really. Uh, done something about, you know, exactly. the, the, the results are amazing. E even when it comes to, to the treatment, it was um, a cooperation of the medical uh, world and the activists. So yeah. if anybody wants to contact us, we are on Facebook, we are on Instagram, um, feel free. <laughs>
exactly. Uh, thank you very much, Christos and Dokan. Um, of course, it was really difficult to summarize everything in just half an hour session, but you, at least we tried, and I think it was a great uh, chat. We learned, I learned at least some of the things from this channel. I hope everyone who watched uh, also uh, increased their awareness, and hopefully they will contact us, and we will be all together in this struggle. And then happy Pride. Um, bye bye. We will bye. have. And we will have. A